And of course, Next Genius fans, the Protoss hero from South Korea, give a cheer if you want him taking the first place ring tonight. Up here at the north, on the old school map, Lost Temple. Um, of course, it's from StarCraft 1. And uh, Warcraft 3 announced StarCraft 2. We have Loner over here at the left as a Protoss is our Korean Next Genius. And you know, the maps that they've chosen for this match are quite similar to the last maps. We have Lost Temple, which was not used, and then we have Metalopolis and Scrap Station, both maps that we saw in the last pool. So obviously these players favoring those maps, but switching out Zelnaga for Lost Temple. Now let's talk a little bit about the history of what happened to these players in the winner's finals. Interestingly enough, on Lost Temple, there's a lot of variation based upon the positions. If you are top versus right, you're close by air. If you're top versus bottom, you're just far away in general. But top versus left, what we have right now on Lost Temple are extremely close positions by ground. In fact, the exact same situation we found our players in in the winner's bracket and loner won that game convincingly with a very fast push so let's see if next genius does opt to do the same strategy twice in a row now one thing to keep in mind is that the third base is just so unbelievably hard to get on this map um, look they both share the gold base so that's almost not an option unless you're fruit dealer um, and then of course <laughs> over here they share an island so that makes it pretty tough to get a third base so you end up in situations where you have to expand to the other mains or sometimes this gold base down here that means that um, harass play if you're using uh, warp prisms or if you're using uh, medivax that's going to be the way you're going to win so we might see that in the late game here and something to take into consideration, this is an important map for Loner to win. If he loses this map, he's gonna play on maps that are a lot longer. And overall, in general, the shorter the map, the happier the Terran. Absolutely, and really, Honestly, Next Genius is the one who's been doing a lot more battling. He is the player who was knocked into the loser's bracket, who's had to battle through White Raw. He's the player who had to win the last best of three, only to be given a reset in the series, not a victory. And it looks like Loner is playing very, very normally at this point, getting a barracks, a gas, and a fast orbital command in the Protoss camp. Same thing. So as you can see, this SCV here, he tried attacking the pylon. Um, a lesser player would have pulled a probe off to try to attack it, but of course, the pylon has enough HP that he can get something out in time to do it. Look, he's going to do it again. Now, you guys might be thinking at home, well, so what? Why, why does it matter if he pulls up one probe um, when there's so many probes many minerals? Well, at this high-level play, it really means a lot. Uh, it, it has a huge impact because they never miss a beat, people like this. They never forget to make an SCV. They never forget to make a probe. And if you pull a probe off mining, that's maybe 25, 50 minerals. Yeah. That's half a zealot. That's huge if you actually start having those numbers add up. And Loner might actually take out this pylon if he kept wailing away at it. But at the same time, looks like that scout is getting completely denied by Loner. And meanwhile, in Loner's base doing the good old fast tech lab play on his barracks. We haven't seen him do this quite yet with a factory. No, this uh -oh. is something completely new for Maloner. I can't wait to see what strategy he does. And whatever it is, it's something that Next Genius has not seen him do yet. So it, I, this is like what we were talking about before Day 9. He's switching up his play a little bit. Absolutely, and it looks like, oh, a Marauder Hellion push, one of my absolute favorite openings in Terran vs. Protoss. Pressure is going to be on fast. Oh, this is a really good build. I think we saw OGS and Snare do this on the GSL. So, uh, yeah. and he dominated with it. You could bust a ramp pretty quickly. That's right, you know, the Hellion, it does a lot of splash damage. The problem with just attacking with Marauders is the probes can come out and help. With the Hellion there, they really can't because the Hellion will clean up the probes so fast. So this is going to be a very strong attack. And with just one Sentry out and one uh, Stalker, Next Genius is going to be hard pressed to hold this. Uh oh, Hellion moving forward has already picked off that one probe. Next Genius has a half. Oh no, a third finish Sentry. It is nowhere near finished. He needs to throw down the fourth field to block everything from coming up. I don't know if that actually blocks. It looks like it barely, barely does. He's just trying to buy himself time. And you see that that Sentry is increasingly getting close to finish. His warp gate is almost done. He's going to get a huge surge of units. It looks like he's going to try to get up. Now, if this Sentry can get another force field. Oh, Whoa. totally botched. Bad force field right there, but he is chasing down that one heli. And in the meantime, the Marauders and Marines walking up the ramp a little bit, deciding to turn around. And Loner has taken an interesting tech switch back at home. Oh, wow. Take a look at that. Swapping all these add-ons and stuff and command center over here. That's right. It's like he's teching all at once, just switching everything up. Realized that that wasn't going to work out because of the sentry. And it forced Next Genius into making a lot of units, but already Next Genius throwing up the Nexus. Very similar timing to the command wow. center wow. of Loner. These guys are mirrors.
Mm, and I'm not so sure I like this very fast robotics bay by Next Genius. The big mistake Protosses make is to get a little too reliant on the Colossus, not only because it looks so cool, but also because it does a ton of damage. But without those gateway units, it's so weak. Well, it looks like the Observer seeing everything that Loner is up to. He is making that Banshee, which he loves so much. And, well, what do you think about this, Day 9? Well, I mean, this is a great example of how e er, economy management creates really good opportunities for players. In the time that Loner was doing this push, while he was doing those swaps with the buildings, he's not spending any money because all his unit-producing structures are in the air. With that money saved up, he throws down a command center. It's all those little timings that make these players so, so strong as they know when they have what kind of resource and how to spend it. That's right. Now, this Banshee is going to come over and start to do some harassment as soon as it pops out. And we're going to have to see if Loner is going to be as greedy as he was in that Zelnaga game. Uh, he needs to keep the Banshee alive. It's such an expensive unit that just throwing it away for three or four probes normally results in Loner getting a little bit behind. Now, he did see the Banshee, so he should be prepared for it. But then again, he doesn't really have a whole lot of anti-air here. Oh, nice one kill, two kills. Looks like he's getting a third. He's trying to go for the fourth. He does get it, and he smartly pulls away. This was the mistake he made on Zelnaga Caverns, being too aggressive with that Banshee. But three or four kills on probes is still four free kills. <laughs> oh, and look Take at this. Five. Beautiful by Loner, just flying that Banshee all over the place, trying to be unpredictable with it. But there are a lot of Stalkers out. I wish that Loner would oh, run this oh. Banshee away, but it looks like, oh. will he lose it? Ten oh. hit points. Amazing. And it looks like he is going to go ahead and repair this unit while he walks up with siege tanks, marauders, and marines in a medevac. His stim, it's not quite half done. So if he attacks now, I'm not sure how well it'll do against this Colossus. No, we, we, yeah, I was about to say we have this Colossus out here. He's got to be very careful. Targeting the Nexus. But no range down yet on that Colossus, it seems. So that Colossus is not nearly as good. He's pushing forward. The Colossus takes about 100 hit points of damage. He's darting forward without any upgrades. This is like watching the last game in slow motion. He does not have any stim yet. He's going to try to get forward and actually pick off that Colossus. This could be a huge, huge win for Loner. Well, it looks like uh, this is a very tense moment, and Next Genius decides to start moving out, uses one force field. Looks like he wanted to cut part of that army off and kill it, because if he can kill even just a small part of the army, then suddenly his army is fighting two halves instead of a whole. Well, you can see Loner staying aggressive, controlling this Zelnaga Watchtower. Uh, I don't know if he's aware that Next Genius, of course, sees his every move, uh, which makes it very difficult for the Terran to get into position. And it looks like uh, Loner right now, he's throwing up three more barracks, getting his upgrade. Stim almost complete, concussive shells on the way, and Viking production starting. So we're seeing very similar units come out of these players as the previous game. And wow, still no range upgrade for Next Genius. That is so the problem of trying to get those Colossi too fast. You cannot afford the upgrades and making Colossi and units at the same time. So those Colossi are significantly weaker. And now that Loner sees that he can put a lot of pressure on his opponent, Next Genius doesn't really have a good time to get that essential, essential range upgrade. And in the meantime, Loner is throwing down five barracks in his base. Gigantic force outside the front and already starting to gear up with some more Vikings. Now, without that Colossus range, this is just such a huge deal. They really win because you keep them behind the units. They don't have as much health as most units that cost that much, so you have to block them off with the other units. Now, it looks like he's about to move out, but if the more open the territory, the worse it's going to be for Next Genius. Terran is intimidated and now retreating. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I don't know if I like this at all. Oh, no, and there's, there's, there's Leroy Jenkins making again another cameo appearance. And it looks like Loner is pulling back. Does he have siege mode? No, he just has tanks to be able to deal a lot of damage. Oh, only just now started siege mode. What a weird twist to have these players right up in each other's faces with the start positions. You know, these bases are so close, and as Tasteless was saying earlier, it's very hard to take a third base. I think that this game, especially with how, uh, how slowly they took their third bases in the last games, we're going to see it end on two base. It's going to be a massive push from both sides. And if we take a quick look at the supply, very close right now. Next Genius 123, Loner at 134. Oh, nice snipe. Those Vikings are quite valuable. That's basically the anti-Colossus. And for the time being, Next Genius seems to just be very comfortable on the map. I am really curious to see, though, when they're going to expand. They may even wait until they're about 170 supply before they get an expansion. Now, finally, that Observer dies. I think Loner's suddenly realizing why 
every one of his moves was being spotted back there. Uh huh. And it looks like that range upgrade is just now finished for Next Genius. That was really the big point of that push. Just